Hello students, today we will discuss about the ligaments of knee joint. When you will have this topic, you have multiple ligaments which are supporting the knee joints. So there is a long list of the ligaments. So what are the ligaments we will learn under this heading? First is your fibrous capsule. Now fibrous capsule is also known as capsular ligament. Apart from that, you will have the ligamentum patelli. Then you will have tibial collateral ligament which is present on the medial side. So it is also known as medial collateral ligament. Then you will have the fibular collateral ligament which is present on the lateral side. So it is known as lateral collateral ligament. Then you will have oblique popliteal ligament and arcuate popliteal ligament. Then you will have the anterior and posterior cruciate ligaments. Then you will have medial and lateral menisci. Then you will have the transverse ligament, coronary ligament and lastly menisco femoral ligament. So because it's a long list of the ligaments, so I have divided this lecture into the different parts. In today's lecture, we will see only few of them, remaining we will see in the coming classes of this ligaments of knee joint. So first today we will discuss about the fibrous capsule. Now you know that fibrous capsule is a characteristic feature of any synovial joint. Whenever you are having the synovial joint, you know that the joint is covered by a capsule and inside the capsule you will have the synovial cavity. So here also you have the capsule and this capsule envelop the joint and the important thing about this capsule of the knee joint that it is deficient at two places. Deficient at two places means that this capsule is absent at two places. What these places are? Now when you will see anteriorly, anteriorly you will find that it is absent and that area is occupied by the patella and the ligamentum patelli. So above the patella, it is pierced by the suprapatellar bursa. Now this is again a very important thing which you have to understand that whenever we are talking about the knee joint, all around the knee joint you are having the extensions of the synovial cavity which are known as bursa. So there is a suprapatellar bursa and these suprapatellar bursa come out by a gap into the capsule and that's why it is known as the deficiency in the capsule. Now the anterior gap which is a large gap present on the, uh, cap in the capsule is filled by the ligamentum patelli. Now here in this image you can appreciate this more clearly that this is your suprapatellar bursa. Now this bursa is protruding upward from this cavity and this suprapatellar bursa prevents the friction between the tendon of quadriceps femoris and the bone. Now you can see here that this is the margin of your capsule. Now in this area there is no capsule and this middle portion of the capsule is occupied by this patella. Now below in this area you will have a ligament which is known as ligamentum patelli. So this is the important thing to understand that anteriorly the capsule is deficient and above the patella it is pierced by this suprapatellar bursa and anterior gap is filled by ligamentum patelli. Posteriorly when you will go you will find that behind the lateral condyle of the tibia you will have a small aperture and they, that aperture is for the exit of the tendon of popliteus muscle. Because popliteus is having a origin inside the joint and the tendon will exit through this gap and it is also accompanied by the layer of synovial membrane which is known as accompanying bursa. So the fibrous capsule is attached in the front of the peripheral margins of the patella and then it will blend with the ligamentum patelli. Now this is more clearly visible in this video clip where you can see that this is your capsule and here you can see that these are the margins of the capsule. So it is very well understood that capsule is not present in the anterior aspect and here you can see that this bursa is protruding in upward direction which is actually nothing but it is a synovial membrane which is protruding in the upward direction. Clear? Now the second thing is when you will see the posterior part, in the posterior part also there is a small aperture and this gap is for the exit of a muscle is known as popliteus. So the popliteus muscle is providing one deficiency and this area 
is also providing one deficiency and this deficiency is completed by the patella and the ligamentum patelli that will come here. Now if you will see the exact orientation of the popliteus muscle and when you will rotate the joint posteriorly in the posterolateral aspect you can see that this is the exit of your popliteus muscle. So the popliteus muscle will come out through this aperture which is present here in the joint. So you will realize that your capsule of knee joint is deficient at two places anteriorly and on the posterolateral aspect. Anteriorly the deficiency is completed by the patella and ligamentum patelli and posteriorly this aperture is for the exit of the popliteus muscle. Now when you will see the capsule it is attached on the two bones superior attachment and inferior attachment. So superiorly it is attached on the femur, inferiorly it is attached on the tibia. So when you will see the upper attachment of the capsule on the femur, first we will see on the posterior aspect. Now posteriorly it is attached to the upper margin of intercondylar notch and it close, closely attached to the articular margins of medial and lateral femoral condyles. So in this image here you can see that this is the posterior view where you can see the condyles and this is your intercondylar notch. So where you have to draw the attachment of the capsule on femur posteriorly, you have to draw the line which is present like this. So it is the line of attachment which you have to keep in mind when you are drawing the posterior attachment of your uh, knee joint capsule on the femur, clear? Now here if you will see the upper attachment this is the posterior view and this is the what you can see is the attachment margin of your capsule. Now here this is the important thing to understand because so many times you have this question draw the attachment line of the capsule on the bone. So this is what you can appreciate that if we will fade this capsule from posterior side clearly now you can see this is the line of attachment which you have to draw in your exam when you are talking about this joint, clear? Now when you were talking about the superior attachment of the capsule and when you will see the medial side attachment. Now on the medial side this attachment is a continuation line along the medial surface of the medial condyle of femur 1 centimeter above and parallel with the articular margin. What is the meaning? Now see this is your medial condyle and this is the medial surface of the medial condyle of femur. Now you have to draw a line of capsular attachment and for this line of the capsular attachment on the medial condyle you have to draw a 1 centimeter parallel line here because this is your articular margin and we have to go 1 centimeter parallel to this articular margin and here you have to draw the line of capsular attachment. And this line will go like this and then it will join this posterior attachment of the capsule, clear? Now when we will talk about lateral attachment, now this on the lateral attachment you have to see the lateral surface of the lateral condyle of femur. So where is the lateral condyle? Here you can see this is the fibula, so this is your lateral condyle and this is the lateral surface of the lateral condyle of femur. Now on this lateral surface of the lateral condyle of femur, you have to again draw 1 centimeter above. So where is the 1 centimeter above? Now you have to draw this like in this pattern. But the important thing is that this line of attachment include the origin of popliteus. Now this is a very important question when you are drawing the attachment of the capsule on the lateral side. Because this is a very important concept that the origin of popliteus is intra-articular, intra-capsular and this intra-capsular origin has to include it in this lateral margin of your capsule. And the another important thing is that it excludes the lateral head of gastrocnemius because you know that gastrocnemius muscle arises by the two head, lateral and medial head. So the lateral head is not intra-capsular only the origin of the popliteus is intracapsular. So when you are drawing the whole capsule, you have to keep this thing in mind that how to draw it 
on the posterior side, on the medial side and on the lateral side. Now when you will come anteriorly, now you have to keep this thing in mind that above the patella, the articular surface of the femur, the capsule is deficient. Now when you are drawing this image, now you have seen this image so many times. Now this is a patellar surface and above the patella, this line is always deficient. So this is what I am saying again and again that whenever we are drawing the capsule on the femur, anteriorly it is deficient and that's why you can see that this line is and on these two points. Why two points? Because this is not a complete capsule anteriorly. This deficient area which is present here is covered by the patella and below we'll see that it is covered by the ligamentum patelli. So this is the important thing to understand that whenever you are drawing the capsule on the anterior aspect, you have to keep this space here because the capsule is deficient. In the same way, I told you that when you are drawing the lateral capsule, this lateral side, you have to include this origin of your popliteus muscle. And this is important to understand that the origin of popliteus is intracapsular. Clear? While this lateral head of the gastrocnemius is outside the capsule. Clear? Now we will move to the lower attachment. So when you will see the capsule attachment on the lower part, it is attached on the upper end of tibia. That's why it is also known as tibial attachment or the lower attachment of the capsule. So in front it is attachment is along the margins of the both tibial condyles and on the side of your triangular tibial tuberosity. So this is again, you can see that this is the anterior view where you can see that this is your triangular tibial tuberosity. Now when we are talking about the attachment of the capsule of your knee joint in lower part, what you will realize that again it is deficient. And that's why when you are drawing this capsule here, again you can keep this thing in mind that we are drawing the capsule only up to these margins. We are not going till downward. Again, this part is not complete because in this area, you will have the ligamentum patelli. Clear? So these are the some few concepts which you have to keep in mind while drawing the capsule on the femur and tibia. Now here the capsule is deficient again, which I have just told you and it blend with the medial and lateral patellar retinaculum with the ligamentum patelli. So you know that when we are talking about the quadriceps femoris tendon, the central portion will go downward as a ligamentum patelli and the side portions will form the medial and lateral patellar retinaculum. So what will happen here that this margin of your this capsule anteriorly merge with the ligamentum patelli that will come here and the remaining part will merge with the respective side of retinacular fibers. Clear? Now, what are the other attachment on the tibia posteriorly? Now posteriorly, it attaches to the posterior margin of intercondylar area of tibia. Now the important thing is that in upper part, when you are talking about posterior attachment, it is intercondylar area of femur. But now in lower part, you have the posterior margin of intercondylar area of tibia. And it also attaches along the adjoining articular margins of medial and lateral condyles. So in this image, you can see that this is the posterior adjoining margin of your two respective condyles of the tibia. And this is the posterior margin of intercondylar area of tibia. So this margin will provide the attachment of your capsule on the posterior aspect. So if you will see here also posteriorly, you will find that this is the margin which is providing attachment to the capsule on the posterior side. Behind the lateral condyle, the capsule is again deficient which I just told you why? Because it allow passage to the tendon of popliteus because the popliteus is having the intra capsular origin. So here you can see that this is the aperture and through this aperture the muscle is coming out and this is the popliteus. Clear? Now the next ligament is ligamentum patelli. Now when you will talk about the ligamentum patelli, the first question comes is that it derived from. So the answer is it derived from the central part of the tendon of a muscle name is quadriceps 
femoris. So, here you can see that this is your quadriceps femoris which is having four component vastus lateralis, medialis, vastus intermedius and rectus femoris. All the four components are going downward in the lower part of the knee and then you are having a continuation which is crossing your knee joint and this area is the central part which is known as ligamentum patelli. The sides of this is known as medial and lateral retinaculum which are present on both the side of patella. So, this is the one thing about the origin or the source of the ligamentum patelli. The second thing is that it extends from the apex of the patella to the upper part of the tibial tuberosity. Now, this is again a question of your exam because when you will see this triangular tibial tuberosity, this triangular tuberosity has been divided into the two parts. This is upper part and this is the lower part. So, whenever you are talking about the ligamentum patelli, ligamentum patelli is a structure which is having the attachment on this upper part only. Then what is present in this lower part? So, here you have the bursa which is known as subcutaneous bursa, clear? So, this is a very commonly asked question in your exam that which structure lies in the upper part of tibial tuberosity? answer is ligamentum patelli and which structure lies here in the lower part of tibial tuberosity answer is subcutaneous bursa. So, this is the one thing. Now, when the knee joint is locked, now this is a very important question for your exam that whenever we are talking about the locking of the knee joint, the locking is of the knee joint is the important thing because it occurs when there is a complete extension of the knee and at this time all the ligaments are taut except ligamentum patelli. So, this is a question which of the following ligament is not taut in the complete extension? Answer is ligamentum patelli. Now, the next third ligament is coronary ligament. Now, the coronary ligament is also known as meniscotibial ligament. That means this ligament is going to connect the menisci with the tibial plateau. So, what is menisci? You know that when you will see the knee joint, inside the knee joint, you are having two C-shaped fibrocartilage ring. Now, these C-shaped fibrocartilage rings which are present here are known as menisci. Clear? Now, there is a connection between the menisci and this platform of your tibia which is known as tibial plateau or you can say superior surface of tibial condyles. So, between them you are having a connection here. Now, these connections which are connecting the peripheral margin of your uh, menisci with the tibia is known as menisco tibial ligament or they are known as coronary ligaments. So, the coronary ligaments run from the menisci to the tibial plateau edges and the coronary ligament are actually the part of the fibrous capsule. That means the capsule which is covering here, the adjacent side of your uh, joint is actually giving the some fibers and these fibers are connecting the adjacent side of menisci with the tibial plateau. So, the coronary ligaments are nothing but they develop from the fibrous capsule which provide attachment between the peripheral margin of your respective menisci and the tibia. Clear? So, what is coronary ligament? Coronary ligaments are the connection between the menisci and its underlying bone that is tibia. Then you will have the arcuate popliteal ligament. Now, arcuate popliteal ligament is a another modification of the capsule of knee joint and this is a Y-shaped fibrous band. So, when you will see the joint, you will find that on the posterolateral side, you will find a Y-shaped band and this Y-shaped band which is present on posterolateral aspect of knee joint is of arcuate popliteal ligament. Now, this arcuate popliteal ligament is having a stem and if you will see the stem, this stem is fixed on the styloid process or the upper end of the fibula. So, here you can see that this bone is the fibula and here you can see this is the attachment of the stem of the Y on the upper part of fibula. Now, this Y is having the two limbs. So, what is happening that the posterior limb or posterior band arches over the tendon of popliteus. Now, this is again a question of exam. Sometimes you have this image based question where you are having this posterior band and this posterior band arches over the popliteus muscle. 
the anterior vent passes and it attaches to the lateral condyle of femur. Now here you can see that this is your lateral condyle of femur and this is the anterior band that will go and attach to that. So it provides stability to the joint from which aspect? Again answer is posterolateral aspect. So now here in this image you can see very well that what is the relation of this Y shaped band with the popliteus. Now here you can appreciate this is the popliteus muscle. So this band is basically important because this band lies superficial to the popliteus muscle. Clear? Now you have one more ligament is oblique popliteal ligament. So there are two popliteal, arcuate popliteal and oblique popliteal. Now what is the question about oblique popliteal? That oblique popliteal ligament derived from. So oblique popliteal ligament derived from semimembranosus. So this is a very important question. So I told you there are two ligaments. One is ligamentum patelli which derived from answer is central part of the tendon of quadriceps femoris. Now the second question is oblique popliteal ligament derived from answer is at the insertion point of semimembranosus. So here in this diagram you can see that this is the semimembranosus muscle which is coming from above and you know that it will insert here on the posteromedial aspect of the tibial condyle. Now from this medial side of the tibia you are having a tendon and from the tendon this ligament is extending and this ligament is directed from medial to lateral but in upward direction. Clear? So there are two things about the oblique popliteal ligament. The first thing is that oblique popliteal ligament strengthen the knee joint from which aspect? Answer is posterior aspect. Second is that oblique popliteal ligament derived from answer is semimembranosus. So it extends upward and laterally. Now this is again the important thing to understand that the direction is laterally. So it is from medial to lateral and you have to understand that the semimembranosus insert on the medial side. So tendon is going from medial to lateral but in upward direction. And if you will see the attachment of the upper end of this oblique popliteal ligament, so it will go on the posterior surface of the medial condyle of tibia to the lateral part of the intercondylar line of femur. So it blends with the posterior surface of the fibrous capsule and it also forms the floor of popliteal fossa. So you know that here will come the your biceps femoris, here you will have the semimembranosus, semitendinosus. Here we have the gastrocnemius muscle. So in this way, it is going to form your rhomboid shape popliteal fossa. Now in this rhomboid shape popliteal fossa, if you will see the floor, that is the deepest structure, you will find this oblique popliteal ligament and deep to that is the capsule of the knee joint. Now the last and the most important is that which structures pierces the oblique popliteal ligament. Now this question has been asked so many times. And the answer is middle genicular artery, middle genicular nerve, genicular branch of obturator nerve. So these are the structures, those are going to pierce this uh, oblique popliteal ligament so that these structures can enter inside the knee joint. So let's see these one by one. Now first you can see in this video clip that this is your semimembranosus muscle. This semimembranosus will insert here. If will uh, hide this ligament, you can uh, very well appreciate that this is the point of insertion of semimembranosus. Now from this semimembranosus, you can see that this ligament will come and it is going from medial to lateral side in upward direction. Clear? So the first thing is that oblique popliteal ligament is a continuation or derived from, answer is insertion point of semimembranosus. Now the second thing is that this is the posterior view of the joint where you can see this is a popliteal artery. Now from the popliteal artery you know that you are having the genicular arteries. One of the arteries is middle genicular artery which is an unpaired branch and that middle genicular artery is going to pierce this oblique popliteal ligament and then it will enter inside. So to see the middle genicular artery we have removed the capsule of the knee joint and you can now see that this is the oblique popliteal ligament and this is the point of origin from which 
this middle genicular is entering inside the joint. So now here you can very well appreciate this artery and this artery is arising from this point of your popliteal artery and then it is puncturing this ligament and it is entering inside the joint cavity to supply the structure inside the knee joint. In the same pattern, your genicular nerves also pierces this oblique popliteal ligament and then they will enter inside to supply the structures of knee joint. So now at the end of this class, what we are able to understand that there is a long list of the ligaments, but in this session, I told you about the upper attachment of the fibrous capsule, the lower attachment of the fibrous capsule. While that drawing the attachment on the femur and tibia, you have to keep in mind that anteriorly the capsule is deficient and this deficiency is completed by the patella and ligamentum patelli. Plus, it is also deficient on the posterior lateral side where you will have the aperture for the exit of your popliteus muscle. Apart from that, there are two very important questions that oblique popliteal ligament derived from answer is semimembranosus and ligamentum patelli derived from answer is quadriceps femoris. So this is all for the session. Thank you.